Man, what kind of a self-respecting slob allows this to happen so fast? But, I guess we better do something about this one. Uh, for those of you who've been with the channel for a long time, you guys may remember this nasty little workbench from the nasty little pit of despair that we used to call our shop. And uh, it's time I have some kind of workbench down here in this blacksmithing area. I guess it'd be good if we had a wall. It'd be cool too. But to be honest with you, the view is beautiful out this wall. I almost hate to close it up because it's so pretty. But I guess we better before snow flies. But anyway... I've got to get a spot set up for grinding, make things a little bit easier that way. This little contraption off to my side here, I have everything set on. That was my uh, half-assed anvil stand for the railroad track. It worked, it worked well for what it was, but I need time to get a little more organized, get some stuff off the floor, because this, this building's already turning into the pit of despair in its own right. Of course, uh, excuses, excuses, but we had a million other projects that we're working on right now that are of extreme importance, so... Cleaning is taking a back burner as it always does on this channel. So anyway, we're going to get this thing behind us set up for grinding. We're going to mount the vise, mount the bench grinder, this garbage uh, 4x36 belt sander. I have my 1x30 Delta, old Delta sander to put in here. Um, we've got to do some repairs on that, so I don't know if we'll get to that tonight, but it's an easy repair. If I can find the little uh, retaining clip that is somewhere in the other pit of despair, We'll see. But anyway, that's what we're up to. So basically, we're just in the process of... I want to try to get set up a little bit. I'd like to finish that draw knife. i got to put handles on it yet and hone the edge. That's really all we have left, and she'll be ready to go out. So, but I kind of want to get set up because I'm getting requests for more draw knives. People are wondering if I'm going to have them up for sale, and that is the plan. I've just got to get set up a little better so we can do it in a little more of a timely manner. So how that's going to work for you guys who are looking to buy the draw knives, I'm going to crank out as many as I can. I'll probably try to start with 10. I'll throw them up on the website and I'll just put them for sale up there and then it's first come first serve. Once they sell, if they sell, I'll make some more, throw them up there. I want to get into making uh, timber framing tools, chisels, things like that, because really this channel really has been all about timber work and things like that. But part of my idea was going forward once we were at a certain point in this build, I'd like to start making the tools that enabled me to build this thing. And I'd like to make my own set of tools for the next two frames that are in the works. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the other side of it. Yeah, let's see if we can throw a shadow and mess this whole thing up on us. So anyway, we're working on getting handle material for this draw knife right here. So what I have, I have two hunks of black walnut here that we're going to use. Now when I select materials for handles, especially a tool that's going to be used, now black walnut probably isn't... If this was more of an impact tool, like a hammer, a hatchet, or something like that, I definitely would not use a black walnut handle. But seeing as how you're just going to be pulling on it, I'm not really that worried about it. A little bit of grain run out here, and that would not pass for something that's going to have impact on it. You see where the grain layers go across like that. I was talking about that in uh, the video where we made a handle for that big hammer. And you see right there. That wouldn't pass muster for something that you would have to swing and have impact with. That'd be no good. 
Another thing you want to avoid, I get a knot right here, and then you have a little bit of an odd spot there. This right here is useless for a handle that's going to have any kind of stress on it. You know, we're making tools here. We're not making uh, artisan draw knives. This is, these are tools that are meant to be used and meant to be worked. Now the black walnut's about as fancy as we're going to get on them. And probably when I get to making them to sell, they're probably going to be putting ash handles on them just because it's such a strong wood. Now, for this I need to have a ferrule on it because if I just have... If I just have this handle on here and I have, I just put that handle on, when you're pulling on it, you have a good chance of splitting that out. So use a ferrule to add strength. Now, it doesn't have to be a big, beefy, meaty ferrule. This piece of uh, three-quarter inch copper pipe will actually be just about perfect for what I want to do here. Plus, we can shine it up and make it look real nice. It looks really sharp. It looks really sharp when you put it on the walnut. So. Let's lay this handle out and see what we get. This is going to be where we're going to start drilling. You can't really see that now. I guess you can see it a little bit. Now because this is a wider handle, I really don't want to just drill one hole down the middle. I want to get a couple of them in there. So we're going to take and find the center on this again and draw a line through it. If I can make my hands operate properly, that would be awesome. Before you go to burn these on, keep in mind because this is a very custom fit when you go to burn stuff like this on, mark which side's which, left and right. You know, make sure you have that straight, mark it on the bottom of them so you don't mess it up. You want to ask me how I know? I can tell you in the last one. Alright, we're going to do the left one first. Now, you think I could find a wet rag or a rag around here that I could wet down for this? Hell no. So, we have a glove. So you kind of want to heat sink on this because you took all that time to heat treat this blade right. You took all that time to temper it right. And the last thing you want, you just don't want it uh, being ruined on you and having to start over. Because every time you go to do that, you go to heat the metal, you go to requench and all that. The more often you do that, the uh, you're really screwing around with the grain structure on that metal. So we want to try to avoid that. Let's see. Get 
you guys adjust it a little bit. So we're going to use the handy dandy B tank so it's going to be loud. We're just going to heat this up. We're going to go slow and easy. And that's our right hand. This is our left hand. So we already have a decent start here. It's already starting to go on halfway decent. So we're just going to finish that off. We haven't done a closing with the iPhone in a long time and if you're wondering why I just went in to edit the video I've been working on tonight and damned if I never took the uh, the good camera out of slow motion so about half the video I'm, I'm importing the files into the computer it's getting late I gotta leave the house at 6 in the morning I'm working three hours away tomorrow and I'm out there it's almost friggin midnight and I'm like damn you know what I mean I import them and I see like my the exit shot or whatever the monologue whatever the hell you want to call it i see it and it's freaking uh it's like 20 minutes long and it should have been four and i'm like oh no <laughs> so anyway what we were working on and i'm sorry for the crappy iphone footage here but uh, i didn't feel like dragging the big camera out and all that stuff again so there's where we're at tonight we're getting the uh we've got the handles fitted on nice fit burnt on and you can see that's why you that's why you rag it off you see how hot we were getting that and you can see where the heat stopped right where the cold rags wrapped around it there so he didn't take the temper out of this blade which would be a big no-no again I can't uh, remind you enough keep track of what sides what because if your hand forged like these are each side is going to be a little bit different so what we've got to do is we have to work this down for the ferrules and uh, shape the rest of it and we're going to be good to go and of course we obviously have to put the final edge on it we want this sharp enough to shave with so anyway that is where we are at so we we're trying out the slow motion on the on the camera tonight just to see if we could get some good smoke shots stuff like that and i think we got some pretty cool footage there so this is kind of a isn't much substance or content to this this video tonight i can't even talk right you can tell it's getting late um not much substance or content we're just we moved the bench out here to try to uh maybe organize a little bit more we're just one piece at a time we're moving that pit of despair and i tell you what it is still packed with stuff i mean it is stuffed i'm, I'm gonna spend the next year probably cleaning that little 16 by 24 building out it's unreal but uh anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this one uh i've been working in the house quite a bit so we haven't been doing a lot of uploads. In summertime, the view counts usually aren't all that good anyway. Usually fall is my best time of year, fall and uh, early winter. But um, I'm working on trying to get the rest of the materials to clean.
close this up finally. That should be shouldn't be too much longer. We'll get back on some barn stuff, but right now I'm doing a bunch inside the house so we can restructure. Uh, I hate to do that, but like I said a couple videos ago, that fall really, uh, that accident really put a hurting on us. And I know a lot of you guys know exactly what that's like. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one.